Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV. My name is Jeff Ogden, the host of this show, and we're really thrilled to have you back today. And we're joined by another great guest, Laura Patterson of Vision Edge Marketing. Welcome to the show, Laura. Thanks for having me, Jeff. We're uh, really excited to be here. Good. I'm glad to have you. I'm going to ask you the question I ask at the start of every show. Who are you and what do you do? I'm Laura Patterson with Vision Edge Marketing, and our company, which started in 1999, focuses on enabling marketing organizations to be centers of excellence by using data, analytics, and processes to improve and prove the value of marketing. That's a very good mission statement of, of trying to help marketers improve. And I think a lot of marketers would like to learn about the services of Vision Edge Marketing. Let's talk about the world of marketing. Let's talk some big picture stuff. The marketing has changed so much. You know, social media has exploded. The balance of power has shifted from sellers to buyers. And it's just, um, Brian Solis, who was a guest on the show, has a book called um, The End of Business as Usual. What is your take on the changing world of marketing? Well, I think you're right in some ways that marketing has been going through a lot of changes because we have so many more channels we can use to connect with our customers. But some of the basics about marketing, maybe we've forgotten those and they are just as important. And that is that our job in marketing is really to just do three things. Find, keep, and grow the value of customers. And I wonder how many marketers have kind of forgotten that. That's interesting. I, I think it's true. And I think going back to fundamentals is, is so important in marketing. So in terms of, you know, how do marketers get around, one thing is the explosion of social media, but also data. I think marketers are drowning in data today. How do they turn data and metrics into usable information? That is another really good question, and I think you're right. Marketers are drowning in data uh, today, and they're having a hard time really understanding what to sort of is usable, what to keep, and what to throw away. But um, really good marketers, they're starting with a different kind of premise. Rather than feeling like they're overwhelmed and just collecting everything, they really understand what it is that they're trying to drive for their okay. business. So they have their business people first. Sure. And they understand what they're trying to drive for their business, and then they're using the data to help them do that. And so they, they are developing better skills in a couple of key areas. And I'd love to share with you what those are. Yeah, please tell me. What are those areas that, that, that they're focused on? Well, uh, we've been doing some research for over a decade. And okay. we've been seeing some really interesting uh, proficiencies among a very elite group of marketers. And this year we did a study, as you know, with ITSMA and, uh, to continue that work. And these marketers are very, very good at making sure that what they do is directly aligned with the business, they have the right kinds of metrics, they use processes and systems and tools, they are very data oriented and analytically oriented, mm. they build strong collaborative relationships with finance, IT and sales, and they're always focused on how they can be better. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about the need for marketers to step back and see the big picture. That's been a theme from a lot of guests on the show. That and breaking down the silos of working with the other organizations. Tell me about what you learned from the study about marketers' need to, to step back and look at the big picture of what's really happening in the business and where they're trying to take the business. Uh, excellent. So our work has, uh, when we started it, uh, we identified from all of the participants, those best-in-class marketers. And at the very beginning, there were two things, really just two things that separated them from the rest of the pack. And right. one of them was called alignment, which really is yeah. about the big picture. It's really about understanding where the business is going, how it's going to get there, how they're expected to contribute to that, uh, that, that progress, and how they're going to be measured. And the second, of, of course, was around metrics. These best-in-class marketers, they're more focused on uh, managing their performance than they are on managing metrics. Mm. Tell me, what do you think are some of the most common mistakes that companies make when, when using metrics? Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> so first of all, the, the, the first most common mistake for, for what we would call the rest of the pack is that they start with the stuff they're going to do. Instead of really thinking about the business, they start with the stuff. And the moment they start with the stuff, they're already taking themselves down the wrong path. 
And then the second mistake they tend to make is that they are focusing on measuring their activity as opposed to their outcomes. So those are two things that any marketer tomorrow can change. How can okay. I be more focused on the big picture, the business needles sure. I need to move? And how do I focus on measuring my, the outcomes I produce as opposed to the stuff or output that I produce? Give us a, a few examples of things that people typically measure that don't really make a difference in their business. Sure. You were talking about social media earlier. Yes. So uh, not that fans and followers and, all, uh, and, and likes aren't important. Sure. Obviously, we all want those. But is a metric that you're going to share with the C-suite probably not so helpful. Okay. Probably doesn't answer the question of the so what. Um, I'm concerned a little bit about even the word leads. If it's not well defined and we don't know what that really means sure. and where that fits in the customer buying process, might not be very helpful. Mm. Might need to be something more like win-loss analysis or more like the number of conversations that sure. are being created, uh, the, the level of consideration, conversion rates, uh, share of wallet, share of preference, much right. more sure. complex types of metrics as opposed to how many visitors did I get to the website this week? Sure, <laughs> sure. Why did we win? Why do we lose? You know. And, but I, I like your your comment about leads because I think a, lot, a mistake a lot of people make is that just because someone visited the website and registered to download an ebook, they're not necessarily a lead for sales. So I talk to us about the need for marketers to sit down with sales and talk about what is a lead. How do you define a lead? How would you? I be a hundred percent sure that you will follow up on this lead. How do they do that? That's a, again um, a real something that the A's do differently. Okay. So first of all, um, the rest of the pack has a tendency to be from the inside out in the way they look at how they're going to um, manage the pipeline. So it's all about their process. Okay. The outside in folks, the A's, are more about understanding the customer journey. And by understanding what the customer's buying process is and breaking that down, not just the buying process that they see, sure. but the overall customer buying process and breaking that down behaviorally into incremental behavioral commitments and then tying that back into their own process, they have a better opportunity to create the right kinds of definitions. And that work needs to be done directly and collaboratively with their partners in sales. That's a great comment, Laura, and I, I really like it. And I, I love your example of seeing the world through the eyes of the customer. I think that for marketers is such an important lesson. Instead of saying, how do we sell? Ask the question is, how do our customers buy? Exactly. Right? What is the journey they're going to go on? So very good. So I know one of the things you specialize is in marketing metrics and dashboards. Um, talk to me about the importance of a company dashboard, what information should be on a company's dashboard, you know, what really could, could a marketer put together to prove value to his, uh, C, his or her CEO? Okay, I'm getting a kind of tall order, but I'll do my <laughs> best. Um, so, a lot of marketers, in our, we, again, with our research uh, over the t last decade and the research this year with ITSMA, Lots of marketers are making dashboards. Sure. Um, lots of tools that they have today allow them to click on a button and produce some kind of report, right? right. Sure. Um, that's not necessarily the right kind of dashboard for the C-suite. Those A marketers are doing something different. So while there are, lots of marketers have dashboards, one of the things that makes the dashboards different for those best-in-class sure. marketers is that the dashboards they create allow them to make course adjustments they allow them to make strategic recommendations, and they clearly show the linkage between marketing activities and, and investments and business results. So if you're thinking about your dashboard, you should ask yourself that question. Can we make course adjustments from it? Mm -hmm. Can we make strategic recommendations as a right. result? And yeah. is it clear, does it demonstrate that linkage? Sure. I, I remember John Miller of, of Marketo had a great example there. If, if we increase the marketing budget by 10% or decrease it by 10%, what would happen to business outcomes? And I think you need a dashboard that can answer that kind of question. And, 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 and so back to what goes on the dashboard. Uh, every company's dashboard is going to be somewhat different because sure. the business outcomes are going to be different. So the real question is, what are those needles that are having to move to sure. the right for the business? Sure. And then showing in some way 
what marketing was expected to do to move those needles right. and the targets that marketing was expected sure. to meet. Sure. And did you or didn't you? Right. <laughs> There's a basic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think, too, you're, you're right, Laura, but, but even things like we have to produce revenue, so we have to win business. Okay, so why do you win? Why do you lose? Where do you find sales opportunities? Are you creating sales opportunities? What techniques, what tactics do you use to create good sales opportunities? I think if, you know, marketers, and, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this, asking those deeper questions of how does this business really work? Mm -hmm. You know, look at the entire revenue process. What is your thought on that? Well, it's not just, so it's really, you know, I, I know that we have a lot of terms out there today talking about how important it is to be, you know, revenue management. Yeah. Obviously, that is very, very important. But as marketers and salespeople, our job is to find, keep, and grow the value of customers. So that means we need to be thinking about it in terms of customer language sure. as opposed to company revenue language. And I know I've, I've been in marketing and sales for a long time, and you have too, Jeff. And there's a kind of a big difference between marketing and sales, although the lines are blurring. But it's sales is the guy that's responsible for reeling in the fish. Right. And they negotiate yeah. um, you know, the deal. I don't really own in marketing what the value is, might, might be of that deal because ultimately I don't get to participate in the negotiation. Sure. But my job is to get the fish on the hook right. or to keep the customer you know, in the pool, so to sure. speak, right? In the bucket. Yes. And maybe grow that customer uh, values as I'm farming it, right? Right, absolutely. So if you, you know, I know, maybe I'm getting hungry here. But <laughs> talking about fish. But the point I'm trying yes. to make yes. is, uh, so marketing should be thinking about that when they're reporting and also on their metrics. And the marketing and sales organizations should sync up and have some common metrics. This is a really good discussion. I think it's, we're, we have some good takeaways for marketers here. Could you come, come up with like three specific things that you think a senior marketer watching the show should do on Monday morning? Yes. So best in class marketers do some things very specifically different. Okay. Um, and there's six of them, and I'm not going to go give you six <laughs> of them. I'm going to give you three. Okay. The number one thing they do is they have direct line of sight between marketing investments and activities and business results. And they have a technique for doing that. Uh, their marketing plans and everything they do it's very, very clear. Uh, we have an alignment methodology to help, but we're not the only ones that have something. Sure. Number one thing. Number two thing, take a look and make sure that you really have clarity around the right kinds of metrics. Are they outcome-based or output-based? Take all your metrics, find a framework. We have one. It's out on Wikipedia. Sure. It's on our website. There's lots of others out there. Take a look. You know, Most marketers today are not only drowning in data, they're drowning in measures, mm. right? Yes. So take all your things you're measuring, yeah. stick them on the classification, and see how many of them are really down in the far left sure. continuum versus the things that matter to the C-suite. Yes. That's the second thing you can do. Third thing you can do is make sure you have the skills in your organization, the right kinds of skills and proficiencies to use data, to do analytics, to have, and that you have processes in place. Because best-in-class marketers work from processes, data, and systems and analytics. Interesting, and I, I think those are some great tips. And one thing I, I think that uh, that I want to briefly mention is I think companies more and more should look to outside organizations, specialists, and bring in specialists like Vision Edge Marketing to address specific things. I always say, use the example of uh, a heart surgeon or an architect. You don't put them on your payroll. But if you need heart surgery, if you want to build a building, you want the best. And I think more and more companies need to turn to companies like Vision Edge Marketing because you specialize in this stuff. This is what you live every day and have been doing it for quite a few years, although you still look very young, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I think there's a yeah. different – one of the things that we pride ourselves on at Vision Edge Marketing is we are actually practitioners. We lived it, breathed it, we sat in the chair as sales sure. and marketing people, so we understand what that world sure. is like. So it's not like we're just making this stuff up. <laughs> we actually, exactly. can, we actually have proven it. it. <laughs> yes. yeah. So someone watching the show, if they want to learn about you, Laura, and Vision Edge Marketing, where can they go to get more information? They can go to visionedgemarketing.com. If you're interested in more about this year's study, 
You can go to ITSMA.com or VisionEdgeMarketing.com. We both have an abbreviated free version of that study on our websites. You want to really get all the nitty-gritty de details? You sure. can buy that report um, from either one of us. Yeah. And of course, they can follow you on Twitter at Laura VEM. Yes. Yes, Vision Edge Marketing. I'm Fearless Comp on Twitter, too. So you can follow both of us on Twitter. I want to thank you for being a great guest on the show. You were a lot of fun. We had a really good time. I want to thank our viewers of Marketing Made Simple TV. Enjoyed having you on the show. Check out our sponsors on the screen. I want to thank Eloqua, our primary sponsor on the show. And Marketing Made Simple uh, TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It premieres at marketingmadesimple.tv and all of our syndication sites. So it's really not hard to find. It's everywhere. So until next Thursday, we'll see you next time on Marketing Made Simple TV.